Peace to you, and may God save Serbia and Syria. And this is a answer portion to, I guess, my YouTube channel. Um, <clears throat> Figs asks in one of his videos, and he asks it to me, so it's not confidential. Um, he asked two good questions. He says, you know, he heard about some name change or something at baptism. What's that all about? Well, originally, that's how you got your name. You weren't necessarily named at birth. Uh, you were named at baptism. And in the Scandinavian countries, I still think that they hold the registry of, of, um, of people there, of the births. You have to register the birth there. I mean, it's the same way. That's how they started registering people. And, you know, uh, by what name they were baptized, what name they'd be using. Uh, in the Apocalypse of John, I believe, it said that we're going to get a second name, a new name. Um, I went with my name that I had because I was baptized in a Roman Catholic Church with it. Um, so I was chrismated into the Orthodox Church with it. They said, you are, you've already been baptized. And this was an argument that went over, like, went over about two years. I mean, I, I really fought to get into the Eastern Orthodox Church where other people, it seemed like it was just, you know, a revolving door. They'd just come in and boom, they'd be fine because they were, they fit the stereotype. I didn't. And they didn't like the fact that I was, you know, just going away from the masjid and I was still defending Islam. Um, but yeah, the converts, you can kind of pick them off because they're always Constantinos, Theophilus, whatever, and then call them inside the church and outside the church they're Eric and Jay this is what I don't like the, the name that you're given is the name that you should use especially why I use the name Yusuf because that is my name um, that's, my, that's my name um, for the Roman Catholics the name was given at baptism, but then your middle name was the saint that you would, your own patron saint, which for us that would just be our name. But, um, and this is, I guess, modern Roman Catholicism circa the 80s or whatever. You make your first communion or your first confession, you get your middle name. You, and that's when you pick the saint that was your patron saint. And that would be your middle name. That's not the practice anymore, I don't believe, because people are born with just middle names, you know. Now, but that's why a lot of Roman Catholics say, oh, yeah, I don't have a middle name. I never had confirmed, or I never went to this, or, you know, or that, or this. So they just have, you know, their, their first name and their last name. That's why a lot of times you'll see, if you watch early court proceedings, even ones from the early 80s, they'll say, what's your name that you were born with or baptized with? because the child didn't have a name until baptism. And I think in some cases it wasn't given by the parents, it was given by the uh, <coughs> given by the priest, but of course the parents could suggest a name, you know, if want to name him after, you know, his uncle who was a brave warrior who died in, on this battlefield defending, you know, our people or our, our religion or whatever. Fanciful crosses. Well, this is actually made out of aluminum. It's not very fanciful. It's got the uh, the Russian three-bar cross on it. It's a soldier's cross. It says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. And it continues, let all those who fear the Lord flee from his presence. You know, and it goes longer into that. How much of it does it say? I think it says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Uh, it's a Russian soldier's cross. It was given to me at my chrismation. It's my baptismal medal because chrismation is the completion of your baptism. And it's come off my body once. When, my, when a piece of my body wasn't touching it, that was one time. This does not come off of me. Um, in no circumstances. Again, this is a mark of my baptism. This is something that smacks me in the chest every day, lightly, not heavily. It's not flagellation. 
like I said, if you know, if I want to go into some slutty bookstore or strip strip club, I I don't go to these places. But if I were to, or even if I were to go to a place that wasn't very good, or if I were to go be someplace I sh know I shouldn't be, or or with somebody, or doing something, it's not like I take. I used to actually take this off whenever I, but then it would be off all the time. And I was told, no, keep it on. And from that point, it, it was on my body. You know, like, oh, I'm having lust or whatever. I should take, no, 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 no. It sucks to be me. I'm already a Christian. It's, it's my baptism medal. This is my connection. This is one of the symbolic connections to, and a physical connections to the last 2,000 years of martyrdom, first beginning with Christ and to bring me back to Christ, to keep remembering to bring me back to Christ, bring my lifestyle back to Christ. And anybody who says anything's just a symbol, they need to go look up what a symbol is. <laughs> symbols are never just anything, they're symbols. Um, I just wanted to add that part in. Um, <coughs> so those were the two questions Figs asked. And the other person had asked me, he said, you know, you say Muhammad doesn't exist, and then you go and talking about Muhammad. Well, um, I think Muhammad was originally named for Jesus, the praised one, but I think there were uh, a character or characters that would come remembered to, to amalgamate to what we know as Muhammad today. Um, Muhammad is only used in the Quran four times, but Ahmed is is pickled throughout the whole Quran, I mean, it's, or peppered, I should say, not pickled, peppered out throughout the Quran. And I was always told, oh, Ahmed, that's the root, that's the important part of Muhammad. Um, well, maybe his name was just Ahmed. I mean, before that, I think his name was Kotham. I think there's evidence for that. There's, I think there's evidence for... Um, for him being able to read and write also. So the Muhammad uh, that is portrayed by the Sunni Muslims today, did he exist? No. You can read Sahih al-Bukhari or any of the early Surat and find out that that is not the case, that that Muhammad never existed. Uh, it only exists in the minds of modern Muslims. Um, even if you ask them the five pillars of Islam, the five pillars, have you heard of this? Islam probably have. Read in Sah Sahih al-Bukhari. How many pillars of Islam are there? Three, one, four, five, seven. And the lists aren't all the same. It's not like, oh, well, they all have the same one, or they all have the same three, or they all have the same four or five, but it's just these other either extra or, you know, less. No, not the case. Um... So, but if we look at Islam from this character, I mean, even if it's fictional, it's it's a very well drawn out one. It's um, well well drawn out by about five hundred years after the death of the supposed man. Um, oh, not even then. Uh, fifteen hundred years, not fifteen. About a thousand years after his death, we have a pretty good picture of what the current Muhammad kind of looks like, and even then, it's still shifting. So, we can look at the early biographies of, of Muhammad and see what the Muslims it's, would say about him, and look at the canonical sources of things like Sunni Islam, like Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Ibn Kathir, Ibn Dawud. Um, we can look at the earliest biography, and it paints a picture of a man quite different than that which Care or Isna would want you to believe in. So we can talk about Muhammad, the man of canonical Islamic scripture. And then we can talk about the actual physical man, Muhammad, which I believe was a title for Christ, that the, these were upset Jews and uh, heretical Christians that moved out that were under the guidance of a man. But even the Sahaba, the Sahaba quickly assassinated each other and killed each other with infighting. 
and then around I think the 800s you had the chromatins that were that were using the the blackstone as a toilet for over 20 years I'm I've read 20 years, but I've also read 48, and they said it's close to 48. Um, and they were calling themselves Muslims, and they were denying God and mocking the Quran. So what exactly was a Muslim? What is, uh, it, 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 it gets very strange and, and very funny. So, yeah, I do make that division. I do say, you know, did Muhammad really exist, you know, as a person in history? Like, we talk about Charlemagne or... Well, we talk about like Jesus or Paul or um, William the Conqueror, Julius Caesar. Did this man exist? Even if he didn't, even if it was just somebody else who we don't know, who doesn't get credit for, or if it was maybe Abu Bakr or something like that, who did all this stuff. The man that we know as Muhammad from the canonical Muslim sources him being the model and character for all Islam, I mean, there's still a lot written about him. We can argue and fight against that Muhammad, too. Um, so it is important. It is important to expose the, the, the actual sincere doubt and the truth while dealing with the canonical... Uh, current form of Muhammad um, Muhammad raised a sword and fought people this is a prophet of God bringing message of peace um, I mean I'll get, get into it more and if you want me to get into specific topics I will later on for right now peace to you may God save Serbia and Syria and go watch my zombie Jesus video um, I think I did a pretty good job on it Take it easy. This has been Yusuf on my channel. And, um, Figs, I really want to talk to you. Let's Skype. And same goes for Nymphredic. I added Nymphredic as a friend. I don't know if uh, Figs is on Skype, but, um, I'd love to talk to both of you guys. Um, and I'd like to talk to you too. <laughs> Take it easy.